Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and today we are printing starter Pokemon, but we are printing the dual colored uh, models by Flowlistic, the low poly dual colored model models, but instead of using dual colors and dual nozzles, we are going to try to get two effects out of one nozzle. So let's see if we could do it. <music> Flowlistic is an excellent 3D designer who has made some low poly Pokemon models that just everybody loves, including some dual color versions of them. But what if you don't have a dual nozzle machine? What if you can't produce two colors at the same time? Well, on Twitter, he pointed out that with Cura, you could do two effects at once, and I wanted to experiment with this a little bit. I was inspired as well by a 3D printing technique called velocity painting, where you change the speed that your nozzle's going as it goes around in order to get different effects. So I'll be trying that, but I also wanted to try a couple of different techniques. Now I'm going to be using Simplify 3D, and while Cura can do some of these, Cura can't do all of the techniques that you're going to see here. Now the first technique that I tried was inspired by, uh, well I discovered one time, in fact I discovered this while using Cura, that if you set up your slicer to do 2.85 or 3 millimeter filament, but your printer has a 1.75 millimeter nozzle, that what comes out of the prints, and these are a couple of test rings that I've made, are kind of spongy and weak and they don't have much substance to it. Here's a series of rings that I printed. After I saw this, I, I realized what was happening. A thicker plastic, uh, a thicker uh, amount of, of uh, filament pushes out more plastic with every turn of the wheel. So if you're actually putting down a smaller filament, that you're getting a lot less plastic that you want. So I figured that I could replicate this by adjusting the flow rate settings. And in fact, that's what I did here. So I have rings here that are printed at a two times flow rate, a one times flow rate, and then I think I did 50%, 40%, 30%, 20%, and 10% flow rate. And you can see that around 20 or 30%, it's together, but very spongy and weak and you can see through it it almost becomes well it becomes like a sponge and this is a really super cool technique here's the uh here's the decoder ring that i tried printing with 1.75 filament that was set for 2.85 filament in the slicer and yeah you can see you can see right through it it's a super neat effect it completely ruins the print and makes everything stick together and just doesn't turn like a decoder ring should but it looks so neat that I thought I would like to make part of my print look like this and the rest of it look like that. So I went into Simplify 3D and I set up the one material to have a point, I think I set it at 0.15 flow rate and I set up the other model to have a two, uh, a flow rate of two times. So it's actually flowing out twice as much. And then I printed it, and what came out was this. So the stomach and the tail and the line around here is all supposed to be that spongy stuff, and the result is not spongy at all. What I think happened here was that in doing the two times area, that it preloaded the nozzle. So by the time it got to the layer, and you can see in the back, it's a little bit spongy at times, but not really what I was going for. Uh, I think there was just too much filament in the nozzle. So in order to make this work, I would have to add a purge tower to this to allow the filament to get out of the nozzle so that it can be doing the, the two week of a flow. So, well, there's Charizard, but it didn't quite come out the way that I was hoping. It just looks like a really bad print at times, and there's no rhyme or reason to that. But that's all right. We'll chalk that one up to education. The next model that I did was Bulbasaur, and the experiment this time was to vary the layer height. Now, I was really impressed with Simplify 3D that I was able to take two models and put them next to each other with different layer heights, desperate, uh, disparate layer heights that didn't match up in any way. So here in Simplify 3D, you can see that I'm setting up the body to be a very 
fine layer height, 0 0.06, and I'm setting up the shell or bulb or whatever and the toes to be a very thick 2.75 layer height. These two layer heights don't mesh with each other, which means that the, the uh, printer is going to have to lay down a layer and then move up like a weird amount and lay down the next layer and then move up a weird amount and lay down two more layers and then move up a weird amount and lay down one more layer. It's not going to, and yet Simplify 3D worked all of that out and it worked perfectly. Now, this model was successfully printed as, as uh, prescribed, but the result was really weird. And I've got another one around here. I'll find it where the top actually completed. But you don't see the finer areas. You only see the chunky layers. Like when you look at this, you just think that it was printed at a low layer height. And somehow your eye is drawn away from the really good and really fine printed areas, and you only see the chunky parts, which I think is interesting. As an effect, there's a weird psychological thing going on here, and as the result of the print, there isn't enough to differentiate the two parts that you see them differently. Like I say, your eye just goes to the chunk and goes, oh, that was printed at a low resolution, and all that high resolution was lost. Now, maybe that's because the low resolution was used on parts that had high angles where the layer lines are obvious. And maybe if I'd have switched these, the overall result would have been that it was printed at a low resolution and it looks good. A little bit like in my video where I talked about the new features in Simplify 3D, being able to change layer heights where it matters. I'm not quite sure. So at a distance though, there's really no difference in any of these parts. You can't really tell that I use two different settings for here. But it was, again, very educational that that this worked. Okay, so we've had two experiments and two not quite failures, but not quite successes. Let's try velocity painting. A lot of people have been getting a lot of good results on this. And so what we're going to do in Simplify 3D is we are going to load up the, uh, this one, no, that was Bulbasaur, this is Squirtle. We're going to load up the Squirtle model and we're going to set one of them to be at a high speed and one of them to be at a low speed. Now, the thing about this is you have to turn off the setting that slows down layers if they're taking too long. Or, I'm sorry, if they're not taking long enough. It's a cooling setting. The idea is if you're going to be keeping the, the printer working on layers, you want those layers to cool so that the next layer will stick to it and uh, you need to turn that setting off. You can't have it slow down for any other reason than your control. I printed it out and the result is this. Yeah, there's, uh, there's no discernible difference between the two parts. The problem is I was printing all of these in rigid ink advanced PLA and it, the advanced PLA is opaque. Velocity painting I discovered only works on semi-transparent materials. So curse you Rigid Ink for making a PLA that works great at every velocity that's just ridiculously constant. Well, overall these experiments were a bust as far as getting a good result from changing the settings on them, but it was educational and so we'll, we'll call that a win, but I really wanted to apply what I had learned and try some new things. So I went back to Charizard and I got some semi-transparent filament again from my friends at Rigid Ink and I tried velocity painting and it worked. The stomach was printed much faster and it came out a little bit more translucent and the body was printed much slower and it came out a little bit more foggy and opaque, but unfortunately it's kind of hard to see, but I also did this one with zero infill and I noticed that I can see light through it. And so I made the ultimate Charizard change. Okay, here's what I did. The tail is print, the tail and stomach and claws are printed faster. So you can see that you get that velocity painting effect 
versus the body. But they were also printed with zero infill so that when light comes through them, they kind of shine a little bit more and the body was printed, I think with 80% infill. That's almost solid. So combining those two, I managed to make a model that has a fairly dramatic difference between the two. But again, it depends on the filament. You can't just do this with opaque filament. You need to use a specific semi-transparent filament to make it work. But well, overall, I really enjoyed this experiment. It was a lot of fun and made a lot of cool models, and it's definitely something that I can talk about. Hey, before I go, I need to end this video with a little bit of information uh, about my last video that I recorded shortly after I recorded my last video. So let me bring you a message from the distant past last week when I recorded this. Hey, everybody. Uh, a couple of quick items. So first of all, I did not give the people at Simplify 3D, BAM, the props that they deserve for sponsoring this contest. So thank you, Simplify 3D, for getting that on. And, and the winner of the E10 will also get a license of Simplify 3D. Now, I'm, I'm dressed like this because I was packaging up the E10 and I noticed something. As I was taking the foam out of the box to get everything loaded back in there, uh, I saw that there is in fact a print copy of the manual and that I opened the box upside down, which explains why I had such a hard time getting at everything. And if I had opened it right, that this manual would have been the first thing that I saw. So super props to Gearbest for actually uh, not just getting a print manual in there, but making it be the first thing you see. I haven't seen any 3D printer that does that yet. Uh, you have to dig through and oh hey, there's the manual. These guys right on top. That's the way I like to see it. So correction. You also get a couple of sample rolls of film limit and a build surface, uh, basically build tack, which you don't need because I've already prepped the build surface with the magic goo. You will get some additional magic goo. If you really like build tack, you can go back to this stuff and wash that off and do it. But I really like magic goo and you're getting some. Hold on to this for the future. But for now, just try the magic goo out. Honestly, give it a shot. All right. Anyways, uh, that's everything that I had for this video, just to correct for the last video. Do you want to know more about 3D printing, but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer, but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.